Now this is gonna be a first look at the Kiedi X Max 3 uh, because there are several updates that are gonna be coming to the printer to address some of the small defects that we're finding in the firmware and also in some of the experiences that we've been going through. But we're very grateful to Kiedi for getting us the printer early on so that we can provide feedback and then we could uh, have an improved experience for those of you that are gonna pick up this printer. Now this is one of the printers that is really transforming the uh, 3D printing space, uh, given the fact that it is targeted for high speed and then high quality. Um, and Kiti has historically, with the, the printers that we've had here, worked with high abrasive, high temperature materials. So this is really gonna set this, uh, this printer in a, in a category in itself because of the type of materials that Kiti typically prints on their printers. And we have, um, we have I think, two to three Kiti printers here that you know, are really uh, printing those type of materials like carbon fiber and nylon, carbon fiber, uh, and, and doing it really well. We're talking about awesome, awesome quality. Uh, so this falls into that high temperature area, but then also kicks in speed, just like the Bamboo Labs, uh, which is also one of the printers that I would say really revolutionized high speed printing uh, with Voron. And then we've also have the Anchor Make uh, also here as well. And we've seen some upgrades in performance uh, to have spectacular speeds. But this printer that you're seeing right here has a 600 millimeters per second uh, print experience while still maintaining some great quality. And we're seeing what the initial quality look, looks like. Uh, that Benchy that you see right here, this is a 15 minute Benchy, or is it a 16 minutes? Uh, yeah, it's a 15 minute Benchy. Uh, and that's pretty spectacular. And you'll see what the quality looks like in just a second. Now, 600 millimeters per second, it has a 325 by 325 by 325 print area, even though the sheet right there says uh, 330. Um, it also has um, a high flow rate of 35 millimeters uh, per second, acceleration of 20,000 millimeters per second, right? It's running Kipler, Core XY, as you can see, and it's using, uh, again, a Kiti high speed uh, extruder. Now, you're going to see it does come with an extra extruder that we're going to take a look at in a couple seconds. It also has a Cortex A53 uh, processor, two hot ends, uh, one copper and then one hardened steel, both of them capable of 350C max temperature. And what sets this printer apart is that the chamber itself is heated, right? So that's a big difference here. So we're not talking about the chamber heats up because the bed itself is heating the chamber and has good insulation like other printers. There's actually a heating element here that's going to heat the chamber, and that's gonna give you some fantastic prints when it comes to ABS, PETG, any kind of material that's gonna require a, a controlled environment. And you could heat it up to 65C. Uh, so PET, uh, you're gonna be able to PET CF. Um, you're also gonna have um, ABS, GF, PET G, Tough uh, PET G, uh, which I believe is one of their uh, standard filaments. And in addition to not only having that heat chamber, uh, it also has a active carbon air filter. And we've run these printers before um, here and we haven't really smelled anything. The exposure, the carbon filters do really, really well. It does also have a 16 point auto bed leveling and it has a flex sheet that you're gonna see in a second. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is that the actual enclosure here is relatively large. It's a little bit wider than the Bamboo Labs if we look at that as a reference, uh, but it has a easy to access front door. The lid is removable. To my knowledge, there's no AMS coming with this or a, uh, you know, a auto material uh, tool like you have with the Bamboo Labs where you're able to have the multiple materials. It seems like this is gonna be a single material device. Uh, the bed is spacious. I do love the lighting. So this lighting, as you can see in here, is bright and it's, um, I would say, you, can, you get better lighting than you do with the Bamboo Lab. I have noticed that there's several um, mods that are going, uh, that are in the community to make uh, people see more because of the lack of, um, of lighting in the Bamboo Labs, like, like the X1 Carbon and the P1P. So that's really nice. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is that it has a very large display. And you'll notice one thing about the display, which we're gonna zoom in in a couple seconds. And this is the area that I was mentioning about the overall language. Uh, the firmware isn't 100% English yet. So you can see that there's some Chinese here and then you basically have confirm. Um, I've also noticed that the, the actual firmware, or at least the display, uh, is not as responsive as some of the other KD printers that we have. So I expect that this is going to improve. I've also seen some reviewers where the actual display wasn't as responsive as it should, and therefore they weren't able to complete the review. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the software that we have, you know, the interface, and then we'll take a look at some of the print samples, uh, and we'll take a walk around the printer. 
Now, as we look at the interface here, you'll notice that it basically has detailed information about your printer. Uh, it also then has, you know, where you can turn on and off the light if this is something that you like to do. And you can see how much, how bright this light is. It, it, it is bright. Uh, sound, uh, that's like a full stop if you'd like to do that. And then information about your chamber, uh, uh, the actual print bed, and then also the nozzle. Uh, this printer has one of the fastest nozzles uh, that I've seen when it comes to temperature. Uh, you get to printing temperature super fast, and you're going to see that in a couple seconds. Uh, so uh, basically, when you uh, tap on the interface, you'll notice that it's still some of the things I was talking about, about Chinese. You can, through their software, uh, download and print Wi-Fi, uh, but I'm not able to do that yet. You're able to send the file, and it gets stored on the onboard memory. Uh, so this is the onboard memory here, and then this is my uh, actual stick. So we'll go ahead and select it, and then this is what's um, in the stick. So uh, this is onboard memory, and again, and this is what the, is on the SD. So not, not a lot on the actual printer itself. All we really had is a cube that you're going to see in a second, so I'll show you the detail, and then I'll show you the Benchy that we printed. Uh, over here, you basically have your um, manual settings, right? So you can do your load. You can do, this is for loading and unloading filament. You also then you have your calibration for auto bed leveling. Uh, it does do the same type of calibration or something very similar to what you see in the Bamboo Labs. But the one thing I will say also is this printer runs much, much more quieter than the Bamboo Lab printer. It does use a BL Touch for the initial bed leveling, and you do have to use, to do the um, initial Z, you have to use this uh, calibration card. That's pretty much it, but once you've done that, you don't have to do that again. It does have an additional nozzle here, so this is the high temperature nozzle, and uh, this is the hardened steel version. If I believe that the full assembly, both of them are identical, the only difference is the nozzle. Uh, it is not as easy to remove, uh, as the Bamboo Lab is. Um, it does require more to be removed in order to get it uh, in and out of the printer. So that's just one thing to highlight, uh, but I don't know how often you'll be doing that. And as I've spoken to the folks at uh, Akiti, when I've spoken to them about switching the nozzle, they really didn't even focus on the assembly. They just said, just take out the print head uh, right here, just take out the nozzle and swap it with the one you have and you'll have the hardened steel version. So I found that pretty interesting. So here you have that. You do have your network connectivity. And then what you have here is your language, and you can reboot, and then you could uh, see you know, the, the software version. So software, pretty straightforward. It does not have a camera, which is something that I wish it did. It does not have a camera. Uh, some of the other Kitty machines do. So let's take a closer look inside. Now, the inside of the printer, a couple things. When you do receive your printer, uh, it does have these uh, points. that There's going to be some screws that you have to remove. They're very large. It does include some Allen keys that you can use in order to pull them out. And you'll notice that the, again, this initial uh, layer line that gets put in is very similar to what you would see in the bamboo as it's kind of laying the first layer. Uh, this, again, was a 15-minute benching. And I'm just going to bring this a little bit closer to the camera so you guys can see what the quality looks like. Uh, this is not bad, right, for the speed that you're getting. And again, this is still running a, a beta version of the software. I thought that this is doing really, really well. It, uh, there's no stringing. Uh, the actual details uh, for something that's printing this fast uh, probably could be refined a little bit more. The first layer is really, really nice. So you can see how that looks right there. All in all, I think this is a great, again, uh, for, for the current state of this printer. It really shows the promise. Now, this is one of the models that I found on the USB. And you notice it's just a standard cube. But this cube also, if you take a look at this, great quality as well, right? Uh, the initial layer, first, uh, first layer, is really clean as well. So really happy with um, how that turned out. Now, it does have a flex sheet. So if I take off the flex sheet here, uh, you'll see what the flex sheet looks like. And I've uh, been printing PETG and CF. We'll move this out of the way, and I'll flip it over so you can see this. So it does have two sides where you can print on. And it's, uh, it's not just magnetic. It's super magnetic. So as we put it here, it snaps into place. That's, that's pretty powerful magnets. Uh, so, uh, great. What I've been doing just um, occasionally as we've been printing, we've been just using some, some alcohol to just clean it. Uh, you'll notice that I had some, some glue here because we were trying some PETG. We're trying some more, um, some different material. Um, I don't really think that we needed it, but we just did it anyway because of habit. And uh, if we take a look at the print head, let's go ahead and take a look at that next. Now, we're going to see the print head in action in a, in a second. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a print. Right, so I'm going to put a print down. I'm going to go ahead and do that benching again, and I'm going to hit print. 
And what I'd like for you to see is, so you see a preview of the actual bench you come up with on screen, which is really nice to have that thumbnail. I'm gonna hit print. And what I want you to notice is, let's watch how quickly the everything, you know, the bed temperature comes up to speed and the nozzle as well. So it's starting to move around in the inside. So you saw a little bit of that going on, but we're gonna see what happens with this bed temperature once it loads everything into memory. Bed is coming up and the bed does come up very fast. And it's also really quiet. Again, you're not having you know, the loudness that you see with the bamboo. All right, let's, uh, let's lower this a little bit so you can see what's going on over here. So you can see it is actually just doing, kind of checking out the leveling just for a second. You can see how you see the BL, BL touch there. Then if we come back up here for a second, I want you to notice uh, this area here. So the actual bed is heating up first. The nozzle hasn't yet heat up at all. But watch this. This is a little bit slower, I thought. All right, now check this out. So now you see the actual nozzle starting to heat up. Look how fast that thing goes. That, in my opinion, is one of the fastest temperature rises that I've seen on a printer. It is going really fast. And it's going to go all the way up to 235. And, uh, and then it will go ahead and, uh, if it hasn't already, I'll probably do another uh, level check or put down the first bead. Let's see which one it does first. Look at that, it's already at 200. That's blazing fast. Wow, check it out. And there you have it. It exceeded the temperature immediately. Look how fast it was. All right, so let's watch what happens, uh, how that first print experience uh, starts off. We'll go ahead and lower a little bit. You can see that, so it's doing, again, putting down a couple of beads of filament down, and now it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna start printing. And it's quiet. I literally have a P1P doing a print job right now, and it's the loudest printer here, and it's the only one that's running. This one, even with the door open, is super quiet relatively quiet. Let's not call it like silent, but it's relatively quiet. All right, guys, so here you see the print head in action. And again, it is moving. Now, the printer does shake a bit, but doesn't shake as much as the P1P. You can see my P1P printing in the background over there, all the way in the back. Now, the other uh, cool thing about this printer is that it does have a removable glass top. Um, obviously, the glass top, well, not glass top, it's a it's a plastic top that's going to help you retain heat, right? So that's nice. And it's pretty standard. I've seen with my other uh, Kiddies, they also have that. Uh, but it's nice that you can either have it on or remove it. And then you can see uh, over there in the corner, you actually see where you can put in your SD card, or in this case, your USB stick. Um, it uh, also comes with a chain, right? So that's already uh, done for you, so you don't have to do anything there. And it doesn't look like anything here would be uh, obstructed in any way. All right, so what you're seeing now is um, just a couple minutes in, uh, around two minutes, I think, is what the online screen says. And there's about 12 minutes left uh, to complete this print. And you can see it's, it's, it's going pretty fast. Now, I'm going to bring in another print into view so that you can get a sense of um, the overall print quality. Let me go ahead and get this one right here back in focus. So this is running. Uh, Polymaker, uh, this is PLA, I think it's, it's Polylite, and this is their Black Galaxy. So it has um, like a glittery look to it, so you can see how it looks right there. All right, and this was printed at, again, one of the top speeds. I want to say that this was printed around 500 millimeters per second, and I was really, really impressed on how, you know, the overall quality is, is, is great for, again, a first, uh, first look printer that's still going through firmware tweaks, right? So this is what you can see. Uh, that first layer that you can see right there also came out pretty, pretty nice, so no issues there. Now, while the printer continues to print that Benchy, let's talk about uh, some of the accessories that you're receiving. So in addition to the nozzle, you do have this, um, again, dry box. It's not a heated uh, dry box in any way, but in the inside, it does have an area that you can actually put uh, the actual beads. So here are your beads right here, right? And this is what it would look like. It's pretty well sealed, and it also has, again, the tubing uh, that you'll be able to use and connect so that you can just feed the filament through here. 
Now the back of the printer is pretty pretty basic and straightforward. You do have uh, this is where you could either have your spool hanging like I have, uh, either with the dry box or without the dry box. I have it without the dry box, and you can see how much is being fed. This is going fast, and you can see how quickly that guy is moving. And again, here is your extractor here. Um, don't really feel much going on there. And on the very bottom, uh, and we'll let's uh, pan down a little bit. On the very bottom here, this is where your Ethernet out's going to be. I have it connected via Wi-Fi, and I have to say that the Wi-Fi connection so far has been incredibly stable. The only thing that I'm not able to do yet is actually print from their software. I'm able to send the file, but not print yet. That should be resolved in an upcoming firmware. Just wanted to give you guys a view to two of the other PDs that we have, the iFast, and then we also have the XCF Pro over there. Great, great machines. Uh, this is actually, uh, you know, we'll be able to print from two filaments at once, if that's something that you'd like to do. Uh, that's a single one over there. But these are also great heavy-duty machines. They're just workhorses. One more view at the print experience, so you can see how quickly that head is moving. Again, early release. I think that this printer has a lot of potential. Lots of potential, especially when you will see uh, for something that is uh, this early, the quality that you're getting out of it and what you can expect is coming uh, with the next firmware releases. Uh, this is really a good first look of what you can expect.